Hello, I'm Gus Downing, <clears throat> publisher and editor of the D&D Daily, and this is the LP News Network. We're here today with Van Carney, National Director of Safety and Loss Prevention for Domino's. With over 14,000 locations worldwide and 5,700 domestically and over 400 corporate locations in the States, Van has built a successful LP program over the last 21 years of his employment with Domino's, dealing with franchise owners worldwide with an emphasis here in the States, he has to deal with a number of issues, from robbery prevention to internal theft, to delivery safety and defensive driving training. He's built the program that has led his industry and kept hundreds of people safe when making home deliveries. A key point when considering the rise of home delivery in the entire retail industry. Van, thanks for being here today. Thank you. You know, Van, the first question is about what all the retailers are focused on right now. And that's home delivery. I mean, you've focused on that and have obviously saved lives, countless lives. Anything you can sh you know, s share specifically uh, for the retailers? Sure, there'd be a couple of items that I would uh, share, Gus. First off, I mean, Domino's, we started home delivery. Um, <clears throat> and in terms of some of the, the issues that are out there now with other folks wanting to get it, into it, uh, you really have two different types of home delivery now. You have what would be employee type of delivery, which we have. And then you also have a lot of third party solution providers that are also doing home delivery as well. And I think uh, if I were a company that wanted to get into home delivery, you have to kind of look at uh, probably the risk associated with it, you know, kind of the benefits and the risk. And so one of the things obviously that I'm focused in on would be the risk piece of the business. And, um, you know, when you talk about risk, when you do what we do, we're able really by having our own employees make deliveries, we're able to control um, the, the image of our folks making the deliveries. And we're also able to, in essence, um, quite frankly, uh, help with being able to um, uh, control what would be the, um, um, the uh, brand protection piece of it. Whereas with a third party right. solution provider, you may not actually have that right. control. Right. And that's from a cash standpoint, from a driving perspective? It could be so. from a cash standpoint. It could also be uh, really from um, a standpoint of, of uh, food delivery as well, food mm -hmm. quality potentially. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of the, the things that my department has done, though, when we talk about the risk, you know, we've tried to put uh, different programs in place. So, you know, when you're talking about drivers and home delivery, uh, we make sure that we do motor vehicle record checks on everyone. Uh, we also have uh, different types of, of training that we do. Um, you know, you mentioned defensive driving. We have a brand new defensive driving training program that we have. Uh, we also make sure that we do robbery prevention training for those folks. Um, and so we try to make sure that the folks that we know that are out there are well trained because ultimately my department's responsibility is to make sure they get home safely every evening. Mm -hmm. You know, now when it comes to the overall LP program, obviously your program is more robust for the, for the corporate stores. Can you share some of the programs you've developed in that unique environment, and how is it, you know, technology playing a part? Sure. There are really three different uh, areas that my department's responsible for. It's the audit and, and loss prevention piece. Uh, we have the security piece that we also are responsible for. And then ultimately, uh, we have the safety piece within my department. And so to kind of hit on what we're doing in terms of audit and loss prevention, uh, we've created a pretty robust dashboard uh, where we go in and we look at uh, certain types of, of uh, key indicators, uh, whether it be within you know, our industry, whether it be bad orders or whether it be edit downs or voids. Uh, these are things that we go in and we're able to uncover those types of losses fairly quickly. We do that both for our corporate stores. We also do it for our franchisees. Uh, in the case of our franchisees, when we uncover a problem, uh, we notify them by way of email to let them know what we found. And ultimately, it's really up for them to go ahead and try to take action. Uh, it's in their best interest because obviously they're going to be able to, if, if there is a theft problem, detect who it is and uh, take that person uh, out to try to change behavior or whatever the case that might be. In terms of the corporate environment, we get a, a bigger bang for, for the return on our investment by uncovering problems within our corporate stores. Um, the unique piece of, of what we've done in terms of technology within our corporate stores is not just that we have an outstanding 
exception-based reporting dashboard. Uh, we also have cameras in all of our stores. Uh, and this was a program that just a few years back we did not have. Uh, now we try to lead by example by having cameras in our stores uh, and try to convince our franchisees that it's in their best interest. In terms of what we're able to do uh, with cameras in our corporate stores, we're really able to try to take the investigation from cradle to grave. When we find it in an investigation report, uh, we're then able to go back to um, our cameras and we're able to validate it. And so then when my team in the field uh, goes to conduct an interview, um, in most cases it's fairly open and shut. And then we can make a decision. Do we, do we terminate? Uh, do we make uh, restitution of some sort? Do we pursue prosecution? Mm -hmm. You know, when it, when it, I would imagine robbery prevention is a key regardless of corporate versus franchise store. I mean, can you talk to that some? Um, it is, um, but one of the things that we try to do, really whether it be on the, uh, the corporate side or the franchise side, um, we have a, um, we call it a safety hotline number, and we want all incidents, whether it be corporate or franchise, to be called into this number. <clears throat> the reason that's so significant is that we want to be able to capture uh, what happens, mm -hmm. and it's it's um, it's good that uh, franchisees or corporate stores call this information in, because then we're able to to take that information and dissemin disseminate it back out to the field. So you know, as an example, uh, if you look at where we are today in New York, um, in Manhattan alone, we have 12 different franchise organizations. So if a robbery were to take place at 42nd Street, there may be another franchisee at 110th Street that didn't know anything about that. So we're able to put that information back out and we're able to, to help them. On the corporate side, um, you know, I mentioned the fact we have cameras in all of our stores. Uh, one of the issues that, that we were having recently is we were using multiple vendors and we were able to find, honestly, a, so, a solution provider to be able to have just one particular solution provider that handled all of our cameras. Why is that so important? Because we have robberies. One of the things that my team does, and, and we have several folks that are analysts on the team that are able to uh, download the robbery information. Uh, we're able to put it onto a jump drive or we're able to send an email directly to the police immediately. And what we're trying to do is get the bad guys off the street. And that's been a very effective program. On the side of franchisees, um, obviously they have to, to download their own video. They have to go ahead and, and, and try to get the police involved. But what we try to do uh, is we try to aid them, and, and one of the programs that we started was we created an, a reward program that we as a franchisor will, will pony up, will, will ending up $2,500, and the franchisee can match that. So if someone does commit the robbery, uh, we're trying to help the police, uh, if they don't have any leads, try to get leads, and so ultimately it could, could lead to a $5,000 reward for somebody that wants to uh, rat someone out and we can have an arrest and conviction and, and try to get the bad guys off the street. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've decided that, you know, if robbery's going to happen, if you're going to rob a Domino's delivery individual or a store, um, we're going to do all we can to, to try to make sure that we keep our team safe by, by catching those bad guys, Gus. Mm -hmm. Certainly. You know, you're very involved in the RSLPA and in what role is that playing to add value to the industry and does the recent partnership with the NRF add value as well? I mean, how is that going for you? A absolutely. Um, when we talk about the RLPSA, I've been a board member now for about three years. Um, and, you know, it's an organization that uh, continues to, to gain a, a footprint uh, with table service, quick service uh, type restaurants. Uh, most recently, uh, we've been able to partner uh, with Pharma, and that's a risk management organization. So we continue to, to get bigger as an organization. Um, this year we have our annual conference in Dallas, and I don't know if you're a um, Dallas Cowboy fan, but we're going to have Emmett Smith there. Uh, so, so that's a big event for us. Uh, the other thing that we, we do as well, uh, outside of the annual conference, is that we also have connects. And a connect is where you go from city to city, and what we're trying to do, those folks that maybe can't afford or they can't get to an annual conference, we take our message directly to them. Uh, out in these different cities uh, to try to create uh, some additional insight to help them security-wise. In terms of the NRF, um, you know, I've been part of uh, that advisory board now for about two years. What I really enjoy about that is the RLPSA deals mainly with restaurants and, and now risk management. 
In terms of the NRF, I mean, obviously, we're dealing with a lot more different types of executives in all of retail. And the NRF, we're able to, to work um, and, and try to move some legislation to, to go in our favor as, as different industries. Um, they have an annual conference, the NRF Protect. Uh, it's going to be in Dallas as well. Uh, it's a great event because uh, you're able to go and meet other executives within our uh, security and loss prevention world. Also, too, the solution providers that come there are, are, are very uh, beneficial. Uh, you know, you talk about technology to help understand what technology is. And, you know, one of the things that we continue to do at, at Domino's to try to keep drivers safe, I mean, we're evaluating uh, wearable type technology to try to send alerts in the event there's an issue. Uh, we have just uh, partnered with a safe company to have smart safes in our corporate stores. So we continue to, uh, to try to grow what we do in the technology world, but some of these meetings that we go to really help us out. Um, the last thing that I would say about the NRF is it also enables us to develop uh, strong working relationships with um, law enforcement, whether it be federal, whether it be state, whether it be local. Uh, and that really helps us out when we talk about robbery or we talk about theft in our industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of on a side <laughs> note, I would just like to, to say to you, uh, I really appreciate you recognizing uh, the NRF Advisory Council. So thank you very much, Gus. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thanks for being here today. Man. Thank you. Well, that's it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to thank you for watching. And until next time, let's keep them all safe out there.